on today's episode, not a fun episode, not even one where maybe I rant about something in an entertaining way, Peter Seidler, chairman and primary owner of the San Diego Padres, passes away at age 63. You are Locked On Padres. Your daily San Diego Padres podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and gentlemen, and welcome to another edition of Lockdown Padres Podcast, which is part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day for Tuesday, November 14th. As always, I'm your host with sometimes, occasionally, but certainly not always the most, Javier Reyes. You might be familiar with some of my work over at Just Baseball. You might be familiar with my Twitter at Javapeno, J-A-V-I-I-P-E-N-O, where you can find my tweets on all sorts of things with my personal account, and then, of course, with the Lockdown Padres account for updates on the show at LO underscore Padres. And, of course, you could also check out the YouTube where you will see Pac-Man and Tatis. Tatis is a big one, I think, especially uh, in a lot of ways today. I think is one, and, and it's important to show our little smile from Tatis today uh, in, its, uh, in a certain way. Um, you could go check that out, Lockdown Padres, on YouTube. Today's episode, guys, is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more right now. New customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 if your team wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. Look, um, hey everyone. I'm if you've been following this show for a long time, if you've been listening to this show, viewing this show, tweeting at this show, following me on Twitter, whatever. Um, I tend to be someone who makes a lot of jokes and whatnot. Uh, that's what I tend to do. Um, not in a edge lord sort of I want to make you uncomfortable way, but just in a uplifting, you know, making myself fun of myself oftentimes self-deprecating way. And today's not really an episode for that. Um, obviously, stay at the top of the show. Um, I was originally going to do today, uh, talk about, um, the Milwaukee Brewers actually. Um, and I was going to talk about how they're a really great trade partner. I've still got player reviews to do, you know what I mean? We, and I waited on today's episode. In fact, um, forget the Brewers for a second. I was actually going to do that for Thursday. I got my episodes mixed up. I was waiting to see if the Padres were going to announce a new manager today. Um, that, that has been heavily rumored for a while and that didn't happen today. Instead, um, a really sad moment. Obviously, Peter Seidler, who purchased the team along with an ownership group uh, consisting of his uncle Peter and Ron Fowler, uh, purchased them back in 2012 um, from John Moore's, um, passed away today. Um, And he became the primary owner of the team after MLB approved kind of the transfer of the role from chairman to, you know, basically from Ron Fowler to Peter Seidler, became basically the largest majority stakeholder in the team. And... Look, I mean, there's so many different directions to go here, um, obviously. And in a lot of ways, I, I, I almost wondered if I should be doing this episode. Um, but I think that's really important to cover this and to talk about Peter Seidler's legacy. Because while this has been a year, and man, what a year it has been. Just to recap, again, not saying that someone passing away is on equal footing in terms of sad moments. I'm not saying that at all, but just a really tough year. I think, in total, uh, in totality for Padres fans. I mean, with all the the, the struggles of the team this year, um, that they really let the team down despite all the excitement, despite the fact that as of late, we've been talking about trading Juan Soto, we've been talking about uh, spending reductions, we've been talking about A.J. Preller, who I have been very vocally against this offseason, you know, and again, still waiting on the manager, and now this, and... I feel especially today for, obviously, condolences and prayers, whatever your thing is, um, out to um, the side of their family, obviously. First and foremost, that has to be kept out of the... um, That has to be said. Um, Get that out of the way first, obviously. Um, And that's what today's episode is about. But, like, man, um, just I feel for, um, especially not just the family, obviously, most importantly, and the organization, Um, as a whole, obviously, losing a figure like this. And then, of course, fans, and particularly fans. And, you know, it's no secret that I wasn't always a Padres fan. I started following them around when A.J. Preller took over, um, to be perfectly honest, which is ironic considering I've been lambasting him so much this offseason. And 
when I started paying attention to them, it was because of AJ Preller and all the trades and whatnot. And then I started becoming a full-blown fan, obviously, when I started hosting this podcast back in early 2020. Um, so yeah, what a, what a ride it's been for a bunch of reasons. I just said 2020 crazy that that's when I started becoming a fan. Right. Um, but I feel for the longtime fans. And the reason I say that is because longtime fans have seen every incarnation of the Padres, um, as a team, whether it was the fun 84 season with Goose Gossage, (laughs) you know what I mean? Whether it's that and obviously Tony Gwynn and Trevor time, Trevor Hoffman, Even some players that didn't always live up to potential but became fan favorites like Khalil Green and and Will Myers and and, and such. And maybe even Andrew Kashner for some people. Tyson Ross for someone like me. You know what I mean? Throughout the years, um, I feel bad for people who have followed this team. And I I tweeted this out after the news, which is that um, it it really can't be understated. Um, In a sport that has so many, in, in a sports landscape in total, NFL, NBA, NHL, and of course, Major League Baseball that has so many owners that just do the bare minimum at worst or at best, I should say, for a lot of owners. They do the bare minimum. They go out, spend a little bit of money every now and then, but it's a business investment for them. And while I'm not here to say that Peter Seidler, that this wasn't a business investment, I think that Evan Drillich um, put it um, quite eloquently on Twitter. One can make a strong argument that baseball just lost its best owner, particularly if the criteria is fan service. In an endeavor built on competition and on providing entertainment, Peter Seidler really tried. And I'm not going to like break down or anything on this podcast, but the tried part is what gets me. Um, In life, I'm a believer in trying. Um, You can look at every single thing that I'm a fan of, Spider-Man being my favorite. My fundamental thing is I just believe in trying, even if there's not going to be the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, even if there's not going to be the ultimate finale that you would have wanted, even if the eternal glory, the World Series trophy, whatever have you, isn't at the end. I believe in trying. I think that we owe that to a lot of people, especially people who aren't or no longer here to try. And I think that that's what I'm going to remember Sidler for, um, trying. And I think that, you know, obviously um, there, there have been mistakes, I think. Uh, we've been talking about that all season, right? All off season, especially. We've had some questions, Cronenworth and all this stuff, but there are so many other teams in baseball that don't even get to this point. And a lot of that begins with having ownership, an owner, ownership group that really cares about the team fundamentally, at least a little bit. Um, you look at some of the, the great owners in sports. I mean, jo- George Steinbrenner of the Yankees, well, obviously, it was a business investment. That's a very important part of all this, obviously. They did like the sport. And I think Peter Seidler did like the sport. And by all accounts from everyone you hear from, I was just listening to, um, I've actually, I've been listening to uh, Ben and Woods out in San Diego for a while, um, especially this offseason. And I imagine I haven't, I didn't get to finish listening to their show um, from, I think it was yesterday and then from um, today. But um, just, you know, from everyone you hear from, every Padres person, every media person, like the nicest guy, the nicest guy in so many ways. And I think that that's what he should be remembered for. And while we have to talk about what this may mean for the Padres and, you know, my favorite things about this, and we're going to talk a little bit more, I think that that's what I really want to hammer home the most in this first segment is he tried. And I think that's what Evan Drellich uh, really captured in a sport that doesn't always have a lot of people who are willing to try. But guys, before we continue talking about that, I want to take just a quick second to talk about our friends over at FanDuel. Look, you want to score early? You want to do well in the NFL season? It's it's kicking off. Baseball is obviously done. You've got hockey heating up. You've got the NBA and whatnot. But let's talk about NFL for a little bit. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150. If your team wins, if you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. And the app is very easy to use. Very easy. That's what you've probably heard of FanDuel before. And this is why, because they're so easy and intuitive. I like that. I like ease when I'm making my bets and wagers on whatever it is. They have all sorts of props. They've got spreads, player props, over-unders, much, much more. 
You want to do total touchdowns for Justin Herbert next week. You want to do under total touchdowns for Justin Herbert next week. If you're a San Diego loyal and want to root against the Chargers, you can do that too. You can you can do all sorts of things, obviously. You guys know what they are all about over at FanDuel. So visit them, fanduel.com slash locked on. Get that nice discount that I mentioned earlier. Remember, it's, it's a pretty good one. New customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. Really awesome. So again, FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season betting schedule agenda, whatever you want to call it, with a bang. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. And just like that, we are back, ladies and gentlemen, here on the Lockdown Padres podcast. Remember to go follow me on Twitter at Javapeno, J-A-V-I-I-P-E-N-O, or at L-O underscore Padres. And just to, to stay golden, all of you listening and watching and whatever. Um, yeah, I mean, look, I, I, my apologies if, you know, I, I, I um, what's the word? If maybe I, I repeat myself. Um, this is an episode just, you know, it's, it's big news, obviously. Um, and I think that one thing that I really want to emphasize again is about the trying and with the fact that Peter Seidler as majority owner of the Padres deserves a lot of credit for the fact that while the Padres haven't had all the winning, and we've talked about this before, we've talked about how AJ Preller, um, ever since he took over, he has not had more than a 90 win season, right? Even some of the best seasons for the Padres. They won 89 games last year, made it to the NLCS, and lost to the Philadelphia Phillies. Even that, like I said, was an 89-win season. But it's it says a lot that Peter Seidler, and he wasn't the only one, obviously. I'm not trying to take anything away from the many talented people or the rest of the family or the many individuals and obviously the players. But the fact that the Padres have become, at worst, relevant, right? They've become relevant. And in a sport that has so many people that kick the can down the road, I mentioned this many times before, from the Brewers, from the Guardians, to the Tampa Bay Rays, who we're going to be talking about later this week, just kind of a report came out that they're trying to shop Tyler Glass now around. Literally the one, their best pitcher right now because Shane McClanahan's hurt. Like, Peter Seiler didn't do that. Um, and he's inaugurated, He's he helped helped inaugurate this new era of Padres baseball, one that cares about culture, one that cares about the fans. I mean, just look at the fan fest from this past summer, right? Just look at that alone and just imagine, especially again for Padres fans who've seen every incarnation of this team, they were in the lower third of spending every single year. They wouldn't spend on Chase Headley. They, heck, they probably wouldn't go out and give a reliever 10 million for one year. You know, if it was a one-year contract and it was a great reliever, they probably wouldn't do that. And now they're out here extending relievers like Robert Suarez, who we don't even know if they're good. You know what I mean? And don't get me wrong, the money uh, and the decisions can be debated. But the fact that the money is there, that's how you win championships. You just saw what the Texas Rangers did. You saw how the Houston Astros kept their big talent. You've seen how the Los Angeles Dodgers, I know we make fun of them a lot, but high payroll, they're in it every year. And while we do make fun of them a bit, they still did win a World Series in 2020. Like, you need money in this sport. And don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Um, I, I Hey, I can listen to people and I see people on Twitter talking about, hey, don't get me wrong, like people like the Rays have seen success. And my thing is, yes, but have they succeeded at the absolute top? You know what I mean? It's, it reminds me of um, the scene in Moneyball when Billy Bean, played by Brad Pitt, mentions, like, my, my bar is up here. You know, my bar is to win a championship. I think that was Peter Seidler, you know what I mean? In a lot of ways, like saying, let's win a championship. Let's make San Diego think. And there's other factors into this, obviously. They got really great players. They had the 2020 season when they really started blowing up and becoming a big deal. They had the fact that the Chargers left, frankly, which meant that the one professional, like, big-time sports team they have now is the San Diego Padres, right? So they took advantage of that, and they deserve a lot of credit for that. And Peter Seidler's the head of that. And... It's it's really unfortunate. Again, I was going to be talking about, I was hoping to be talking about the new manager, which still hasn't been announced. And with all this turmoil, with all this stuff, this is just another thing um, that I imagine Padres fans are are really annoyed to have seen. Uh, annoyed is a bad word, I should say. Um, just heartbroken 
I think is a better word. I don't know why I said annoying. That was dumb. Um, heartbroken to see. And it really just kind of is like the the cap on a really miserable year to be a Padres fan. Um, but it has to be emphasized that Seidler and company um, helped turn the Padres into relevancy. Even with the spending reduction, they're still going to be in the top of payroll, right? They're still going to be up there, right? Like, that's still amazing. Even if you're at, like, $200 million next year, let's say flimsy, like, oh, $201 million, whatever. You get my point. Even if they're around then, they're still near the top, and they've got superstars. When in the world was the San Diego Padres the destination for superstars? And he signed off on those deals. And one reason, one thing people have complained about with AJ Preller sometimes has been like, look, he's not the, it's Siler that deserves credit because Preller, it's easy to just give away contracts. The guy who's cutting the checks is the one that's deciding whether or not you can do that in the first place, basically, especially for superstar players like your Machados, like your Bogarts, like your U Darvishes, like your Fernando Tatis Juniors, right? Like all those sort of players, you have to get the okay from ownership. And Peter Siler, time after time, seemingly said yes. Um, and it's also really sad that this comes after. Again, he's had type 1 diabetes and he'd survived two bouts with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Lymphoma, my apologies there. And they announced that he underwent a medical procedure that would prevent him from attending any further games um, for the rest of the year. And again, it's just, I, I'm sorry to keep emphasizing this, but it is amazing how much of a, a really just depressing and heartbreaking year this was for Padres fans in literally every aspect from ownership to management to manager to on the field right like just every single aspect of the game uh it's it's really unfortunate and Seidler like it's it stinks that when this news first came out with the medical procedure they kept kind of pushing like it's fine we'll be okay and it turns out that it wasn't fine obviously that's why we're doing this podcast um age 63 born November 14th I'm sorry my apologies Born November 1960. Um, what can I say? There's not much else to say. And part of me even wonders if, do we think maybe this is why a new manager hasn't been announced yet? Do you think that maybe Padres management and company knew that this might happen? So they figured it would be kind of a bad time to announce a manager because it is weird how long it's taken at this point. Um, in a lot of ways, I think, especially since it is a team with the aforementioned superstar talent and whatnot, maybe this is part of that, right? Like maybe this is part of why we are going to have to wait a little bit longer for that management announcement, um, whether it be Benji, whether it be Mike Schilt, whether it be Phil Nevin, former Padre, whether it be Ryan Flaherty, whether it be, heck, and Ozzie Guillen, I don't know. You know what I mean? Preller's a wild card, but maybe part of this, maybe they have decided, and because of this, this is we're going to have to wait a little bit longer, um, and for good reason. Um, just, just wow, man. Again, all the talent signing off on it and attending certain fan events, being there, having fun, clearly caring about players. Um, as you can see when he, you know, communicates with them. And again, can't be emphasized enough. Um, not every owner's like that. Not every owner's like that. Um, and as I tweeted, you know, from my personal account, again, go follow me if you want at Javapeno. Um, that it's he's a prime example of what being a uh, owner should be and what it should entail. And he was easily probably when you make the thesaurus, not a thesaurus, what am I saying? The encyclopedia? The book? The biography? What's the word for this? When you're doing the, the you know, you're chronicling this era of Padres baseball, Peter Sather's got to be like one of the top people um, there, I think. Obviously, he's not the only one. Again, players deserve a lot of credit, obviously. Tatis is going to be the one everyone talks about all the time, obviously. But Peter Sather deserves to be mentioned that in that same vein. Before we conclude and talk about what this could mean potentially for the Padres going forward, um, of course, because that is my job after all to tell you about what this means for the Padres baseball team, um, a quick word from our sponsors. And we are back, ladies and gentlemen, here on the Lockdown Padres podcast. 
Of course, thank you for making us your maybe first listen every day. Free and available on all platforms. Go check out SiriusXM as well. It has not been a happy podcast. I haven't done a podcast even remotely this down in a long time. And hey, I encourage everyone to leave your comments. You know what I mean? Like, whatever. Uh, I, I know that sometimes there's something therapeutic about just putting something out there putting words onto comment sections, screen, paper, whatever. Feel free, send your messages or whatever. Um, Man, in terms of the Padres going forward, yeah. I mean, as majority owner, now don't get me wrong, he's not responsible for everything, as I've said before, but he's a big part of it. And if you look back, I mean, look at this. I mean, one of the jokes that I've made, ongoing jokes on this podcast, is how every year I would keep saying, all right, yeah, okay, this year, probably going to be a little bit quieter of an off season. Maybe we get Michael Conforto. Maybe we get, if people remember when I was excited about, like, Brad Miller and Jock Peterson, like, not bad players. Let me be very clear. Not bad baseball players, but, like, middle-tier, low-tier free agents at best, right? Getting excited about... You know, like the like the minor players that you can acquire, being like, hey, this is why I love the Melanson signing and all that stuff, and why I think they don't need to re-sign Trevor Rosenthal. And then they would go out basically every year and be like, Javier Reyes, you are an idiot. And I'm I almost like to believe that Peter Seidler and company were like, oh, and they think we're gonna stop. You know what I mean? Or do they think we're gonna stop right now? No, 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 no. this isn't some flash in the pan. Some hey, let's pretend we care. Like, let's say the Yankees as of late, right, where they finally decided to spend money and uh, spend money by their standards, of course. And they said, "Okay, we'll extend the best player on our team and we'll get a pitcher. And it's almost like you're pretending, almost putting out there that like you're just doing the bare minimum, it felt like. And Seidler and company and A.J. Prowler and all of them, they said, no, (laughs) we're going out and signing Xander Bogarts. No, we're trading for Juan Soto. No, we're signing you Darvish and trading for Blake Snell. Which, granted, that's that's not as much to do with money, but still. And we're going to sign Hassan Kim, too, just because we can and we feel like it. You know what I mean? Um, almost like a, that, that line in draft day. You know what I mean? There's a, there's a line in draft day when Kevin Costner's character, which, by the way, ridiculously not great movie, but strangely watchable. Really great cable movie. Um, that he has a moment when he's trying to get his draft picks back, and then he also asks for a punter or whatever, right? Again, it's a movie. Um... And then he's like, yeah, and I want Put- Putney, or whatever his name is, a kick returner, or Put- Punter, I forgot what it was. And they're like, yeah. And they're like, what, now you want Putney too? And he's like, yeah, and you're going to do it because I because I feel like it. You know what I mean? Like, just, you're going to do all this stuff and do this just because I feel like it. That's what that, like, Darvish, um, Snell, and then Hassan Kim felt like. Um, and then just in general, all of these moves these past few years, um, and even the middle tier ones, like Jay Cronenworth, like the extension of Manny Machado. Hey, I remember... When Peter Seidler, uh, almost like Babe Ruth called his shot when he was like, yeah, uh, extending Manny Machado. It's our our number one priority, kind of alluding to like, that's what we're going to do. And they did it like just a few days later, I remember actually. And well, I have some issues with the extension, um, not in terms of the amount of money, but rather should they have done it. And I'm not just saying that because Machado had a down year, but that's not that's not necessarily a responsibility of an owner. I will take an owner that's going to have swings and misses over kicking the can down the road anytime. And part of me is wondering, will that still sort of happen? I think it remains to be seen, um, to be perfectly honest with you. It's possible that without Seidler as the number one chairman owner, that maybe if the Padres don't keep winning or if they don't have winning to go along with the spending, I should say, is it possible that they slowly roll back and revert into what they used to be? Um, I think that that's an extreme outcome, and frankly, I don't think it would happen for a long time. I think it would have to happen after, like, the Padres, all of their contracts expire, like your Xander Bogarts, or at least just a few of them. So, like, like maybe a Bogarts or a Tatis or a Machado. Um, that remains to be seen. Obviously, that's like a decade from now because of how big those contracts famously were. Um, but it's it's worth looking into. It's, it's weird because also, if we're being honest... Um, Peter Seidler was one of the big proponents and believers and was just enthralled and constantly pushing how much he believes in A.J. Preller. So part of me wonders, is this a sign of something that might come, that a change might be underway? Because if he was his biggest defender and he was the primary owner of the Padres, then maybe that's what that could mean as well. 
Um, it's something to talk about, uh, frankly. And I, I don't think it would happen now. That would be incredibly tone deaf to do that right now. Um, and I just think that it's something that in right now doesn't exactly matter. Um, it obviously doesn't matter to compare to the loss of life, but um, I could see it. I could see a world where maybe AJ Preller is let go after the season because now, um, especially if they aren't successful. So we'll have to see how that pans out. And I don't know if it means how like they're going to be even more strict with the spending reduction. Maybe. I don't quite know what are the intricacies of all of this because they still have a lot of good players on this team. They still have a lot to figure out and they still have a lot of relevance. If the Padres start firing on all cylinders again, they'll get all that media attention and relevancy right back. I know they kind of lost it this year and it's really frustrating because on top of losing Seidler now and you know, it makes the season even more frustrating to be like, wow, like all these guys, you we we had the opportunity to really change the fortune of everything and Guys just didn't perform for whatever reason, right? And guys didn't make the right moves for whatever reason. Um, but that doesn't belong um, to Peter Seidler um, at all. Instead, again, it's it's just this doesn't happen. It does not happen in any sport. I don't want to say any sport because I don't know necessarily about like the world of soccer and hockey. But it just doesn't happen in baseball that you go from being the runt of the litter, this afterthought a team that is considered a farm system for other teams to becoming a top three payroll team in all of major league baseball it just does not happen and peter seidler deserves all the credit for that um padres put out a statement that i feel i might as well read that i think was well put um obviously let me see if i can find it really quickly with profound sadness, the Padres announced that their chairman and owner, Peter Seidler, passed away today in San Diego. He will be dearly missed. If I can now find the full um, statement that I'm looking for right now, because it's on Medium. Oh yeah, it's on Firewire. Padres organization mourns the passing of our beloved chairman and owner, Peter Seidler, said Padres CEO Eric Gruppner. Today our love and prayers encircle Peter's family as they grieve the loss of an extraordinary husband, father, son, brother, uncle, and friend. Peter was a kind and generous man who was devoted to his wife, children, and extended family. He also consistently exhibited heartfelt compassion for others, especially those less fortunate. His impact on the city of San Diego and the baseball world will be felt for generations. His generous spirit is now firmly embedded in the fabric of the Padres. Although he was our chairman and owner, Peter was, at his core, a Padres fan. He will be dearly missed. They go on to note that the Padres will open the home plate gate at Petco Park beginning this past afternoon. By the time you're reading, this has probably already happened. For those who wish to gather to pay their respects, free parking will be available at the tailgate lot. So hey, if you're for some reason you're hearing about that from me right now, uh, that you can go check that out, then hey, more power to you. Again, I'm not in San Diego. I'm in New Jersey. But um, well put. Padres fan. Padres fan. I like that. That was a well put. Uh, good uh, end cap for that. But in terms of the rest of this team, those are just some things to think about. What does this mean for the manager you hire? What does this mean for A.J. Prowler? And what does this mean potentially for spending going forward? I'm not totally sure. We're going to find out. I don't think it'll be an immediate impact in terms of the what we'll see on field or in terms of free agency. But again, it's something to keep an eye on. Um, it just stinks, man. And again, I feel bad for Padres fans as well who have seen this team just completely transform. It doesn't happen, guys. It doesn't happen. Some might say the Astros. Nah, man. They still had some money to spend around back in the day. Remember Andy Pettit? Remember Lance Berkman? They had some stars. They had some stuff. Obviously, they got better. But no one goes from like 26 in payroll to top three. It just doesn't happen, man. It just doesn't happen. And once more, I want to reiterate, I know I've, re I've repeated myself a lot on today's podcast. My apologies. Um, he tried, you know, in a sport that is full with a lot of owners that, you know, that I know based from what I've heard and what you've heard, probably based on what you've heard, a lot of owners don't, a lot of owners don't really care. They view it as investment, call it a day at the end. And they don't really care. I think Peter Seidler cared and he tried. And with all that being said, everybody, that about does it for today's edition of the Lockdown Padres podcast, the only pod that may be better than the Padres themselves. Remember to subscribe to the podcast 
wherever you get your podcasts from. Tomorrow's episode, probably going to be a live show um, about the announcement for Blake Snell's Cy Young. Maybe we do need to pick me up. Uh, so probably going to do a live show when that comes out tomorrow. I'll also have an article over at Just Baseball available on him as well, predicting maybe the top free agent destinations for him. Um, also going to be talking, hopefully, about the Milwaukee Brewers being a trade partner. And I think I'm going to talk about Tyler Glass now. Maybe old buddy Lisi Sombrano of the Locked On Rays podcast. Maybe he can come on and talk about that. That should be a lot of fun. Um, but guys, until next time, stay faithful. Stay safe and rest in peace, Peter Seidler. Take care.